besties. It is Sunday morning, one of the greatest days of the whole week. I have finally finished watching Bridgerton. It's all very exciting stuff. So this season of Bridgerton was split up into two parts. Part one, I've already kind of discussed and given my not only thoughts about, but I've also given my predictions for part two in my last video. So if you want to go check that out and you want to go take a look at that, um, feel free to. Today I'm going to talk about part two of Bridgerton, the questionable season finale of uh, season three of Bridgerton. Wow, lots to discuss, lots to think about, am I right? Season three follows Penelope Featherington and Colin Bridgerton. Colin comes back from basically like a summer of study abroad. He just is like trying to find himself. They're both at that age where they're just like trying to figure out like who they are, what they like, what are their interests, and what do they want to do with the rest of their lives. Colin in particular has taken a profound liking to women in the biblical sense. That man is banging his way all around Europe. It's crazy. They heavily, heavily, heavily insinuate that he has been hooking up with lots and lots of women. And when he gets back from his travels, all of the girls in the town are like fawning over him. He somehow becomes like the most eligible bachelor in the town, which is really interesting because where the fuck has he been all summer? Like how did the queen decide that Colin Bridgerton is the most eligible bachelor? I don't know. But nevertheless, the arguably most boring Bridgerton of all time is the most eligible bachelor in the town. <laughs> I'm being a little harsh on Colin. He kind of gets a good reprieve in part two, and I'll talk about that. But part one, Colin, I'm not a big fan of. So that's where you find Colin at the beginning of part one. And then you find Penelope, and she is um, kind of doing her own thing. She is still Liddy Whistledow, um, otherwise known as Gossip Girl. Hey, it's me from the future. I just want to give you a heads up and let you know that I keep mispronouncing Lady Whistledown's name. I keep forgetting that there's an N in there. I make a comment about it later, but I do transition a lot back and forth between Lady Whistledown and Lady Whistledow a lot. So just prepare yourselves. If it bothers you, I sincerely apologize. That's literally on me. After three seasons of watching Bridgerton, I should know that it's Lady Whistledown but I'd be forgetting sometimes. Just a fair warning and a heads up. I'm so sorry. And she is mourning kind of the loss of her friendship with Eloise because last season Eloise found out that she's Lady Whistledow and has obviously and understandably felt really hurt by that. Your best friend has basically been like gossiping and lying about you. Maybe not lying, but your best friend has basically been gossiping about you and your whole family for the last several years so i can understand why eloise would be a little upset by that and obviously penelope has like nothing to say and is like you're right i'm sorry that was like fucked up with me but i'm not gonna stop writing because a girl's gotta have a job god forbid a girl has hobbies you know so that's where you find our main characters at the beginning of season one now one of my major complaints about season three before I continue is I feel like the Penelope and Colin storyline really is not the only main storyline. Like, I think that a lot of the other seasons have really focused and honed in on our two main love interests a lot more than they did this season. I don't know if that's because, like, Colin and Penelope have already had like several seasons and several years to kind of build up a, a friendship and a connection and a rapport. But literally up until the middle of season three, you don't really see Colin actually like Penelope in a romantic way. Like Penelope has just been fawning over this guy for years and crushing on him. And he has literally gone so far as to say that he would like never date her. Are you mad? I would never dream of courting Penelope Featherington, not in your wildest fantasies. Some of the other storylines to watch out for this season are Eloise and Cressida. Eloise, Penelope's ex-best friend, and Cressida, kind of the, uh, the mean girl of the town. She is also a bit of a spinster in the same boat as Penelope and Eloise, so it kind of makes sense that Eloise has found a connection with Cressida in the midst of this friendship breakup with Penelope and it is really like a very humanizing season for Cressida you feel really kind of badly for her and you find a lot of sympathy for her and I think she does a lot of like character growth and development in part one of this season also going on at the same time 
Benedict Bridgerton is one of the Bridgerton brothers. I think he is the second oldest Bridgerton brother. His storyline in like every single season is just him being a bit of a thought. I love that for him. I do. I have no issues with Benedict exploring his sexuality and like banging the season away. What I do have an issue with is the fact that they focused on it for so long. Like they focused so much on Benedict this season. I feel like if they had cut half of his scenes we still would have gotten his storyline across <laughs> and we could have inserted some more interactions between penelope and colin personally i think or you know more interactions between penelope and eloise or penelope and her family i i would have loved to see more interactions between penelope and her sisters this season but i digress the end of part one of season three the kind of midway point of the season is colin professing his feelings for penelope before i even get into that the premise of part one of bridgerton season three is that penelope is in her i think third season of finding a match colin is like so uninterested in finding a match he's busy like just thoughting around he just wants to have a, a hot boy summer <laughs> And he's like, yo, Penelope, let me as like your bestie help you find a man. And would you believe it? It works. <laughs> Colin Bridgerton has helped Penelope find her confidence and love for herself that she otherwise might not have had the opportunity to show or otherwise might not have been encouraged to show because she doesn't really have like a, a super supportive at home situation. Side note. Another kind of storyline and character development line that's kind of happening throughout the entire season is you really see Penelope's mom step up to the plate. And I think you really start to see her like gears turning and you start to see her soften up a little and you start to understand why she acts the way that she does um, and why she's not like as thoughtful or warm and the kind of reasoning is because like the world is unkind to women and it's best that you prepare now which is so interesting to see in parallel with like Cressida's family because they kind of have like a very similar rhetoric that they're teaching Cressida where Cressida's mom is like listen women don't have the privileges that men do we don't get to just do and say what we want we have to like look out for ourselves so very very interesting um parallels there and really sad to me that like Cressida and Penelope couldn't be friends because adding Cressida to that like friend group between Eloise and Penelope would have been I think just really good for her mental health honestly <laughs> she needed some some besties she needed some some girly friendships I think but I digress. Colin helps Penelope find a man. The man in question, Lord Dubling. He is kind of fucking boring, honestly. I've said this uh, in my last video, but I feel like he was a little lackluster. And of course it was most likely so that we don't lose interest in Colin, but Lord Dubling was a nice guy. I mean, he was just looking for like a practical marriage, a practical wife who has her own interests and can keep herself busy while she is gone. And you know what, honestly, I don't really know why. Maybe I just need to rewatch part one i don't really remember why lord Debling and cressida don't end up together at the end of season three i guess i'll kind of touch on this later but i just i'm really not happy with the ending that they gave cressida i think that that was like not cool i feel like why would you build up a character as like this complex character with like genuine feelings and emotions and a difficult home life and show her character development and her emotional capacity only to kind of villainize her at the end and give her like an unhappy ending i'm just not happy with the way that that turned out um justice for Cressida I think I mean long story short basically Cressida her family's trying to marry her off and she is a spinster now as she's been like non-married for three years so they are trying to like set her up with some old ass nasty dude or if she doesn't marry that guy they're going to send her off with her like cranky crabby old aunt in the middle of nowhere on a farm somewhere I just think that like giving her an ending of like kind of almost like punishment <laughs> it's just not not for the girls in my opinion anyways penelope and lord Debling are about to get engaged and colin during this time of like getting to know penelope in a little bit more of a romantic dating prospect kind of way he realizes that his feelings for penelope all along have been much more than just feelings of friendship he finds himself longing for her companionship longing for her letters and communication with her longing to spend time with her and feeling extremely jealous of the male prospects that are actually um showing interest in penelope so at the end of part one he literally interrupts 
what is about to be an engagement and professes his love for Penelope and is like, I love you, pick me, choose me. And she does. And that's the end of part one of season three. So part two of season three begins and Colin and Penelope are telling Colin's family, are telling the Bridgertons that they're engaged. Penelope and Eloise are kind of sort of maybe rekindling their friendship a little bit. You can definitely tell that Eloise has like a soft spot for Penelope as they've been best friends for like their whole lives. So it's not easy for Eloise to just turn off that like caring side. But upon hearing that Penelope and Colin are engaged, Eloise is like, what the fuck? First of all, y'all are both fake as hell because neither of you told me that you were interested in each other, which to be completely fair, like no, Colin didn't say anything to anyone about being interested in Penelope. That was such a literally like so out of left field to be like, I know last year I said that I would literally and never ever in a million years date you or be interested in dating you. I would never dream of quoting Penelope Featherington but I want to marry you. Like, that's such a crazy jump. So I understand why that would be kind of like shocking for Eloise to see in here. What I don't understand is, girl, you have been best friends with Penelope since before y'all could even read or write right like y'all have been best friends i don't know i actually don't know how many years but y'all have been best friends for a really really long time you mean to tell me that you've never ever ever once noticed that your friend your best friend who you spend all your fucking time with has a crush on your brother like i'm sorry I, they position eloise to be this like really smart and like clever woman who is gonna get down to the bottom of this and she never once picked up on the fact that Penelope is crushing on her brother, that's literally crazy. Like, you're lying. Come on. But let's say for argument's sake that Eloise is shocked and surprised. Honestly, even if Eloise did predict that Penelope has a crush on Colin, there is no way that she could have predicted that they were going to walk in and be engaged that night. That, that was crazy. That was objectively shocking and surprising and crazy. Eloise is like, yo, have, does he know? Like, have you told him that you're Gossip Girl? I want to call her Gossip Girl the whole video. Have you told Colin that your lady whistled down? If you don't tell him, I will, basically. Um, Eloise gives Penelope an ultimatum, to which Penelope is like, you're right. I have to tell him, and I promise I will. And Eloise is like, good. And you can definitely see as the season progresses that like Penelope's had a couple of opportunities to tell him that keep just getting kind of interrupted. It's like a bad timing kind of a situation. However, you know how Bridgerton loves it's like, sexy scenes um i won't go into too much detail about this because i'm not trying to get demonetized on youtube however nicola wow <laughs> one thing that i did not expect on my um bridgerton card this year was to see full frontal boobies i don't remember if we saw like yiddies at all in previous seasons i like have no recollection however in this season they definitely they showed some boobas it was tasteful it was brief and i am grateful that i got to see such a a lovely and beautiful pair on the screen I feel I feel blessed as does everybody else. The entire all the discourse on the internet is just like wow. Thank you. <laughs> so Nicola Coughlin Coughlin, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but thank you for your service. Anyway, Colin and Penelope bang before they're married, obviously, because they have been like fucking edging for like eight years i don't know penelope's about to tell colin that she's gossip girl and they get interrupted and so she misses her opportunity during this time um the ton is trying to figure out who lady whistledown is because the queen wants to know who lady whistledown is and is upset that lady whistledown keeps lady whistledown keeps evading her a kind of underlying storyline the entire series is that the queen is trying to uncover and unmask lady whistledown and this season in particular she's like doubling down she's like all right she evaded me last season i'm gonna find her this season so she literally puts out like a five thousand dollar hit on lady whistledown's head and she's like whoever can find her for me i will 
pay you five thousand dollars or or i guess five thousand pounds this is this is england and now everybody in the town is is gossiping about lady whistledown who she could possibly be will she won't she come forward you know if she does come forward like it could be really incriminating to her and her family and also it could be like a really big power play power move and you know nobody could tell her anything and she has so much power and this and that and you know nobody would want to marry her certainly if she was like of of marriageable age and they're having this conversation and cressida who remember cressida really doesn't want to get married this season she just wants to like live her best damn life and be a spinster and be single for the rest of her life with the girlies and (laughs) amen to that cressida (laughs) a girl can dream so Cressida's overhearing this conversation and she is like, wow, what an incredible opportunity that has been presented to me. If I come forward right now as Lady Whistledown, nobody can tell me otherwise. And also, nobody's going to want to marry me. So I don't have to marry this ugly, dusty, musty, crusty old dude who wants like 10 kids. And I can collect the, the money that the queen is giving me and just like run away and move away. And live my best life. <laughs> my camera started overheating, so um, I had to just pop it in the fridge really quickly. But I need to finish filming this before it, it overheats once again. Okay, so back to what I was saying <laughs> before my camera so rudely overheated. Cressida is seeing this opportunity to come forward as Lady Whistledow. Lady Whistledown. I always forget that there's like an end there. Cressida is seeing an opportunity to come forth as Lady Whistledown and hoping that this will like solve all of her problems. So she steps forward and admits to being Lady Whistledown. We as the viewer obviously know that this isn't true. And at this point, Eloise and Penelope are the only people who also know that this isn't true, other than Cressida, of course. Once again, this trio of women kind of being pitted against each other, even though they are so similar and would in another world be best friends. While that's happening, Eloise and Penelope kind of get pissy because they're like, Cressida doesn't deserve the clout. It feels like the three women are clout chasers, quite literally. Like, Eloise is pissed that Cressida is lying and now is going to use this power as an opportunity to talk shit about everyone in the town. As if that's not what Penelope is doing, basically. But Cressida is going to be doing it and lying about it, which is like, ooh, ooh, ooh. At least Lady Whistledown always told the truth, even though she was like spreading everybody else's business. Okay. Eloise is like, no, no, no. Cressida can't take credit for this. That's crazy. Penelope is like, I can't believe Cressida's taking credit for literally all my hard work. That's crazy. And Cressida's like, holy fuck, I can't believe that people are actually believing me. <laughs> so Penelope and Eloise decide that like Penelope is going to discredit Cressida and release one more publication to say that like Cressida's a liar and you shouldn't believe her. And when she goes to deliver her writings to the publishers and printers of the Tan, Colin catches her and it's like, holy fuck, you've been Lady Whistledown this whole time. Which is like hard to see. It's a bummer. I ran after you because I was worried about you. When in truth, you knew exactly what you were doing because it was you who printed tonight. It's not print tonight's edition. Oh, but every other one. I actually did not expect Colin to find out in this way. I had a feeling he was going to find out inadvertently. I thought he was maybe going to overhear a conversation between Eloise and Penelope because I feel like the two of them are always having like secret conversations in the Bridgerton house. And I'm like, bro, Eloise, don't you have like seven siblings? (laughs) Like, I'm sorry. Doesn't your whole family live in this fucking house? Like, what are you doing talking about secrets in your house? That's literally cuckoo bananas, cuckoo bonks. Anyway, Colin finds out and is super pissed. Penelope is like, OMG, please, like, don't be mad at me. Like, Lady Whistledown is who I am. This whole time, too, I'm kind of like, if you're so passionate about writing, like, why don't you channel that writing into, like, something else? Now that you have the recognition and what's the word I'm looking for? Reputation, right, of lady whistle down why don't you just begin writing under that pseudonym and like stop doing the gossip column and start doing something else entirely like i don't know maybe it's just like a writer thing and like the people want what the people want and as a like a, as a writer or cur- curator of of art you have to sometimes give the people what they want i don't know i just feel like if you have that level of clout you could stop the gossip column perhaps anyway colin is like you got to give it up and penelope's like i can't give it up and then he's like well i'm still gonna marry you because we banged and i'm a man of honor and i've deflowered you and so i can't just send you off into the marriage mart now again we have to follow through but it'll just be a contractual marriage there won't be any love 
yeah okay it literally takes not even like one episode for this dude to fold and be like and i will not stand for anyone blackmailing my wife anyway during this time penelope and colin do get married it felt like it was literally brushed under the rug on their literal wedding afternoon the queen interrupts and is like one of y'all is lady whistledown in the midst of all of these shenanigans, Cressida finds out that Penelope is Lady Whistledown. She has had like a couple conversations with the queen and the queen is not convinced that Cressida is Lady Whistledown. She's like, you? Mm, try again. But Cressida is like hell bent on impressing the queen and convincing her that she is Whistledown. In the midst of doing this, she discovers that Penelope is Lady Whistledown and begins to blackmail Penelope for double the reward that the queen is giving her so that she can like escape to her life wherever it is that she wants to escape to and can finally be freed from the confines of her horrible home life. Team Cressida low-key, honestly, like I'm, I feel like they have humanized Cressida a lot in this season and my heart goes out to her obviously colin is like what the fuck like we can't you can't be blackmailing my wife and i will not stand for anyone blackmailing my wife oh now she's your wife oh i thought this was just a marriage of convenience a contractual marriage but i see now that that's your girl okay colin also during the midst of all this penelope's mom finds out that she is whistled down so at this point the people who know that Penelope is Lady Whistledown are Eloise, Colin, Cressida, and Penelope's mother in that order, I believe, of finding out. Penelope's like entourage is trying to get Cressida to like stop blackmailing her. And um, Cressida is like, no, this is my literal only chance to freedom. To freedom! I have like ruined my reputation and I need this $10,000. And if you're not gonna give it to me, I'm gonna tell fucking everybody in the town that you're Lady Whistledown. Penelope's like, you know what, guys? I've had enough of this. I am going to come clean to the whole town. And with the queen's permission, I'm going to announce it to everyone. Anyway, Penelope comes clean and is like, I am Lady Whistledown. And I would like, with your permission, to come clean to everyone. And the queen is like, sure. And Penelope gives this like really beautiful speech about how she started Lady Whistledown because she felt like as a woman, she was constantly overlooked and overseen and that her opinions didn't matter. And she started writing Lady Whistledown to give herself a voice because she was otherwise not feeling seen. And she regrets not taking that as an opportunity to share the voice of other people in the town who would otherwise not be seen. Um, she regrets using her powers for evil and not for good. And with the Queen's blessing, she would like to continue writing now as Penelope Bridgerton, because again, she and Colin are married now. And the Queen is like, sure, but I'll be keeping a, a you know, watchful eye on you, girl. And Colin is like, um, I love you, I love you, I love you. Cressida, unfortunately, is discredited and is sent off to live with her crabby old aunt who lives in the middle of nowhere and the farmlands of, I guess, Scotland or something. I don't know. I'm unhappy with that. I'm honestly really unhappy with that. I feel like they've done, they did a really, really good job of humanizing her this season and like making us feel for her and sympathize for her. I think they did a really great job at explaining to us why she would feel the need to blackmail people, you know, like just seeing her in a state of desperation to escape the confines of like her home and the confines that society has like put on her as a young woman in the world. And instead she gets punished for it and i know that like blackmail is not good but have you ever considered that cressida is just a girl think about that let that sink in for a second justice for cressida during this whole season there are a couple other love stories going on that includes francesca and john francesca is one of the younger bridgerton girls and she is also on the marriage mark out this season and she finds herself a nice, beautiful man who is quiet and enjoys relaxation and loves to listen to her. Her kind of storyline is, you know, she feels like she's the quietest one in the house in a house full of very boisterous and like kooky Bridgertons. And it's hard for her to not only like be seen and heard, but it's hard for her to like even see and hear herself. So she is excited to be married to someone who is 
calmer, quieter, who kind of allows her to be the one to step outside the the norm and step outside the box and be brave and, and be the more vocal one in the pairing. Francesca and John kind of bring out a really beautiful side of each other. And I love that for them. And they're gorgeous little love story also while that's happening lady bridgerton the viscountess um she is finding a little uh maybe love in and what's her name's brother why am i forgetting her name who's to say also antony and kate are pregnant and they're gonna have a baby in india because antony wants to be and feel closer to kate's family in india and wants the baby to feel really immersed in its indian culture which is really beautifully done and beautifully said the mondriches are rich now they've inherited a bunch of money and are like now part of the like nobility of the ton you love to see black joy and black people winning i love that for them and that's kind of like it for this season this season kind of ends with a montage of the featherington girls and their babies penelope's sisters each have a girl and penelope has the firstborn boy of the family she's a mom now and she's a bridgerton and she is now writing as penelope and no longer writing under the pseudonym of lady whistledown i don't know what that means for the series i don't know if this is the series finale or if there is going to be more also right francesca and john get married and they're moving to his house in scotland eloise is moving with them to this castle because eloise really wants to see the world so that's really exciting for Eloise. Okay, my camera is overheating, so I'm gonna wrap this up. I don't know if there's going to be a season four of Bridgerton, although it feels like there are a few loose ends that need to be tied up. The loose ends in question are Eloise wants to travel and in that same note, we meet um, Michaela, who is Francesca's new sister-in-law and and therefore kind of like Eloise's sister-in-law by proxy, by the transitive property. I would love to see a little love story going on there between the two of them. Also kind of some loose ends, Cressida going off to her aunt's house. I don't know if that's the end of Cressida. I feel like they wouldn't have built up her character so much this season if they weren't going to give her like a substantial storyline in the next season. So I'm very curious to see how that character develops i don't remember where she's going but it could be similar to where eloise is going i don't know if that's going to come into play i could be really really wrong about that i forgot also lady bridgerton and her little love interest i would love to see a little bit more of that that's awesome i love that she's finding a little bit of new love antony and kate are having a baby and i would like to see it Maybe they're going to be in India all of next season. I wouldn't mind some scenes in India. <laughs> That'd be sick. And now that Lady Whistledown is revealed, how do we move forward with that? How does Penelope move forward? Writing under her regular name, now that she's a mom especially, are we going to see her struggle to balance motherhood, a marriage, and a job? I don't know. Overall, thoughts on the season. I had fun. I enjoyed myself. I wouldn't have chosen uh, that song for the carriage scene, me personally. I don't know if I would have chosen a Pitbull song, but that's just me. I really appreciated Nicola allowing us the privilege of seeing her bare chest. That was crazy. Um, congratulations, honestly, actually. <laughs> like, amazing i'm happy that the girls made up at the end i love i mentioned in my last video i really really was rooting for penelope and eloise to be friends again um i'm glad that they are because now that they're sisters they're going to be spending a lot more time together justice for cressida as i've said multiple times throughout this um little commentary and i would love to see eloise have a little gay love interest it is june it is pride month happy pride and i think in honor of pride month i would like to see eloise make out with a girl and I, I, to be honest, I think she would like to see it as well. I, I wish that they had kind of explored Cressida and Eloise as a potential match. I also do feel like maybe Cressida has a little bit of a, a queer streak in her as well. And maybe we'll be able to see that in the next season. I don't know. We'll freaking see. All in all, I had a lot of fun this season. I wouldn't say that it's my favorite season of Bridgerton. I think my favorite season of Bridgerton is probably season two. And I also really liked Queen Charlotte. Um, that was so such incredible and beautiful storytelling um, and added so much additional color to the Bridgerton universe. So all in all, I had fun. It's definitely not my favorite Bridgerton season, but I had a good time and I would love to know 
your thoughts on Bridgerton season three parts one and two and general predictions for the upcoming season if there is one is there going to be an upcoming season and if there is like what's it going to be about who's it going to be about what's going to happen I'd love to hear predictions and if you've read the books don't don't ruin anything don't spoil anything for me I don't like spoilers I like surprises but would love genuine thoughts predictions comments questions concerns okay i actually have to get inside because my camera has overheated like five times already and it's also gonna die soon so 